Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is the Ultimate Unity tutorial series and welcome to episode 2. So with this one we're going to take a look further at our terrain that we have here on screen. We're going to look at importing into Unity and we'll look at textures and materials. So texturing in Unity can make or break the look of your game combined with the lighting. These two create a quality look and feel to your game. So what we're going to do first off is import some textures into Unity. So we're going to create a separate folder for that. So down here in the asset window, we can right click, create and select folder. And let's call this textures. In that folder, I'm going to drag and drop three textures, which you can download from our website. If you head over there, go to downloads and assets, ultimate Unity tutorial and download them there for free. Now we have three different types of textures. We have stone, grass and dirt. And the idea of what we're going to do is apply them to objects in the game. Now, the way um, textures kind of work is not how you would expect. So here on a terrain, we can literally apply a texture. However, to game objects, we can't apply that texture as a texture. It has to be converted to a material and then onto a texture. But we'll get to that a little later on. So firstly, let's assign a texture to this whole terrain here. And we're going to use this tool here, the paint texture. So let's click on edit textures, add texture, and then we can drag and drop this stone texture straight into there. And we can either change how metallic it looks or how metallic it doesn't look and change the size of the tiling. Now the tiling represents how much it kind of duplicates over the course of the terrain. So if we click add, for example, we can see it looks like this. If we click on edit and then edit again, we could change the size of the uh, tiling here. So for example, let's change it to five by five and you'll see that it kind of changes it real time. So I'm gonna keep it as, let's say 10 by 10 for now and click apply. So at the moment, this is a very flat texture. And remember what I said about textures, they can kind of make or break how it looks. So we need to create something called a normal map. If we click on stone 001, hold control on the keyboard and press D, we can duplicate that. It'll auto rename it. So what we're going to do is press F2, rename it back to stone 001 underscore N. Now this N is short for normal map. And what we're going to do with this texture selected is over here in the inspector panel, we can change the texture type to a normal map right there. You'll be presented with a couple of different things here create from grayscale, which we're not going to touch, and a couple of other things. But all we really need to do at this point is click on apply. So back to our terrain. If we click on it, make sure we're on that paint texture, click on edit textures, edit texture, and we can drag and drop this normal map into this option where it says normal. There we go. And click apply. Now we're not going to see much of a difference at this point, but if we re-enable our directional light, over here in the inspector panel, we should be able to see when we zoom in, it gives it a little bit more density. And this is where the lighting and textures combine together to actually give a decent look to the game. So you could necessarily apply just a 2D texture if you wanted to go for a flat sort of game, if you wanted that style, but it is the uh, normal maps that really give it that extra oomph in the game. So if we were to select this normal map, change it to grayscale, leave the bumpiness, leave the filtering and just click apply. We can see it changing real time again and you can see it becomes a little bit more detailed, especially here where we can actually see it properly. So going back to terrains themselves, a terrain kind of is at the very bottom of its possible peak. So whereas we can raise a terrain like that, if we wanted to lower the terrain from this point by holding shift as it instructs us to do here, we can't actually lower the terrain. What I would recommend doing is using the paint height tool. Now well, the paint height tool allows us to set a specific height for where the terrain is. So then we can either set it up or down. So what I'll do is I'll set the brush size to maximum, opacity to maximum, and let's set the height to 100 and just click flatten. And all that does is raises the entire terrain to that level. So if we were to raise the terrain using this one here, we can raise it. And if we hold shift, we can also lower it. This allows us to create raises like mountains, dips for lakes and oceans and whatever else we need. So that is a quick way of raising the terrain to a specific height. So what we look at now is creating maybe some kind of uh, a little mountain. 
or mountain range. So we have a couple of different options that we can use to either raise or lower the terrain. And what I'm going to do is select this one here. I'm going to stick here, hold down my left mouse button and just drag upwards slightly. And you can see that it's created that bumpy, rugged look. Now we can always take that a little bit further if we change the brush size, perhaps right down to five. And we can go to this peak here and do the same again. And it, see, it gives us a kind of jagged edge at the top. Or you can go along and just kind of construct like that. It's all about how much detail you want to go into. You know, I think the idea is you probably maybe want to explore your options and figure out what kind of game you want to go for. But you can see here, this has kind of given us a little path through the terrain. Now, what I like about this is we could use this to our advantage and literally use it as a path through our terrain. So what I'm going to do is select this brush here and I'm going to hold shift and you can see that's far, far, far too much. You can see it's kind of dipping way below the terrain. It's not what we would want. If this happens, that's down to the opacity. So we can change this opacity to about, well, quite low. I'd say maybe double what we have as the brush size for now. Hold shift and we can just kind of glide our mouse through this section here to create what we will consider a path. Now, it's all about the opacity in this case. So we can either raise or lower each section to give it its necessary feel. So I'm going to turn this into a path now. And what I'm going to do with that is add in another texture. So this Dirt 002, let's hold control and press D on it to duplicate. And let's right click and, uh, sorry, F2 to rename. Uh, let's change it back to Dirt 002 underscore N. And let's change it to normal map. And we'll have it from grayscale again and click on apply. So now let's apply this new texture to the terrain. So click terrain, paint texture, edit, add texture, drag and drop the main texture and then drag and drop the normal map. Let's have this as slightly metallic so we can drag that to maybe about there. And let's have the size same as our stone 10 by 10. Click add and then make sure you click on the texture and then you can paint. Now you'll notice it's kind of very faint if we do it here. So we have the option of kind of blending textures. Now blending textures is going to be quite useful, especially in this sort of area, what we're trying to do here. But what you'd need to do is increase the opacity to change it to a solid color. And you can see just how much this is affecting how the game looks now, because we can mix many textures together on top of each other in a terrain. So I'm going to zoom in with my mouse and I'm going to paint down here all the way and what I think I'll do is I will take my raise lower and I'm going to increase my brush size there change the opacity to be quite low again and I'm going to bring this down that my opacity needs to be just a bit smaller Okay, so it, this is a different ways that you can create different effects within Unity. There's no real kind of danger of ever ruining anything because you can always undo everything. But you can see here, I'm holding out shift and moving everything along. So I want to raise this bit of terrain here. And what we could do is use smooth height. So the smooth height smooths everything out. Kind of builds it all into the same kind of how can i put it height we could put so let's change the opacity a little more and let's change all this so dragging along where we've defined the path we can see that it is raising or kind of evening everything out a little more so it looks more refined rather than a mess so it's kind of looking cool now and the last thing I'll explain in regards to this texturing idea is if we've got a bit of texture here that we've accidentally messed up, we can go to our paint tool, select, and we can change the brush size to be quite small and opacity to full. And we can literally just move bit by bit what we want to erase and rewrite with the original texture. So we have a bit of a path going through what we consider a bit of a mountainous range now.
So the final thing here with textures is let's add this simple grass texture. Now, grass on a terrain can be done in a couple of different ways. I'm going to go into texture just for now, but it's something we will move on to um, probably next tutorial, I think. So once again, let's hold control, press D to duplicate our grass, F2 to rename, underscore N, change to a normal map, uh, grayscale, and click on apply. So let's add this, edit texture, add texture, grass in the normal, grass normal map in the normal section, maybe a little metallic, and uh, we'll change it to 10 by 10, and click add, select the grass, and let's paint the section here with a larger brush, like so. So you can kind of see how this is all taking effect, and if we use this setting here uh, to change it, we can kind of give a bit of dirt at the bottom of this stone here, so the opacity would need to change Brush size would probably need to change as well to about there. And we can kind of blend those two textures in a little more. Maybe change the opacity down just to about two. And then we can kind of paint it quite nicely. So at this point, you can see things kind of taking shape and forming a little better. You can also kind of slowly paint over sections of the grass to give it a bit of a different look and feel but we'll be getting into more 3d effects with the grass pretty soon so next thing we're going to look at is materials because we've only dealt with textures on the terrain and not really materials on objects so what i'm going to do for this example is click on game object 3d object and let's just have a cube and i'm going to bring this cube all the way up and across and let's increase the size to about five by five by five so we get a bit more visual on it now if we were to apply a texture to this straight away the texture wouldn't be applied it would automatically create a material so let's give that a go let's apply this stone texture to the cube drag and drop stone texture straight on there and you'll notice a new folder has appeared called materials and it's automatically created that material for us this saves us a little bit of time but we can also create materials manually to do that we would right click create and down here we have material so we could just call this let's call it blue mat now both these materials are pretty much the same at the moment the only difference is this material has a texture attached to its albedo so we're going to work with this text, this uh, material, I should say, just for now. And you'll notice that we can change the metallic and smoothness. Now everything we change changes in the scene real time and we can see what's going on. So if we go to our textures and we want to apply the normal map to the stone, we can drag and drop into this little section right here. Like so. And you'll see it changes real time. So there's plenty of options to work from when it comes to... Uh, these materials and things like shaders and rendering mode and we will go into them at a little later date when we get real in depth with our graphics so just keep in mind with materials they are highly customizable to what you would want uh, a good example of this is if we didn't want an actual texture in we could always change the color of it by clicking on this little option here and selecting color from this menu so let's select a blue color and we can literally drag and drop that material on as well. And the same principle applies. We can change all the options and it changes real time within Unity. Uh, and if we wanted, if we absolutely wanted, we could change the color and have a material as well. So you can see how that works. The material is applied and it has changed the color. However, this is not necessarily the best option in all cases. It just depends what you want to see. But don't forget, you can also change the alpha as well although you're not going to get too much of a difference at this point having it fully white gives the full texture feel but obviously you move it around it gives slightly different appeal on the texture so i'm going to reapply this stone texture to our cube and uh, let's have a quick look at different possible shaders so shaders are a way of determining how a material can look on an actual object and a good example of this is if i change it to uh, from standard to particles and go with additive you're not going to notice too much however if we change it to particles again but go alpha blended 
on the actual material, if we re-drag and drop, you can see what kind of effect it does have. So if I was to try this with the stone and reattach it to the cube here, and on the material, do it again, particles and go on additive, you can see that it kind of goes somewhat invisible, but you can just about see it. This is the effects a shader has. And a shader also works with the texture and the lighting to give, again, different quality graphics in the game. So let's hold control, press Z to undo everything we've done there, change all the materials back to just standard materials. We'll have that as just a blue material. And that's pretty much all there is to it. What I would recommend is playing around with these materials and applying them to different objects in different ways. So remember, you can always drag and drop from your assets onto the scene or into the hierarchy here, and it'll be applied to that object. So next episode, what we're going to do is look at some environmental features of the terrain, so things like grass, trees. We'll look uh, more at lighting, because as I said, lighting is crucial in gaming. Uh, we'll also look at starting to code, and we'll bring in a player so we can actually walk around and have a look at our game in the game view. Because at the moment, we can't really see anything because we've not set this up properly yet. So guys, until that next episode, thank you very much for watching.